Welcome back. We're going to talk about the Cold War today, or at least its origins. Uh, as we go forward, we'll talk about some of the episodes of the Cold War. I want to start by um, defining it. Uh, the Cold War is that half-century-long conflict between the Soviet Union and its allies uh, against the United States and its allies. Uh, this competition takes place across the uh, entire gamut of human endeavor from uh, a military arms race, especially a nuclear arms race. Uh, it's a political competition, um, uh, certainly an economic competition uh, between the capitalist West and then the uh, sort of controlled or communist economies in Russia and China. Uh, there's a uh, cultural competition it's essentially a contest to, uh, to see which system is best. Uh, it's kind of a, a fight or a competition for the sort of the hearts and souls of mankind. So it's a worldwide contest. It creates a sort of bipolar world, uh, two axes, uh, the United States and sort of the center of the Western alliance, a uh, capitalist or market economy, representative uh, style governments for the most part. And in the Soviet system, a planned economy, a much more uh, totalitarian uh, type government, a uh, much more closed society. So this, uh, this will go on uh, from the end of the Second World War all the way to, what, 1991, when the Soviet Union finally cracks up. So uh, I want to talk about the origins here. And this is a strange topic uh, for me to discuss with students who are all born, uh, for the most part, uh, in the early 90s, um, born about the time the Cold War ended. And so for uh, you guys who are listening to me, most of you uh, don't remember the Cold War at all, which seems very strange. Uh, I grew up uh, through the Cold War. I was born at the height of the Cold War, and we never thought it would uh, end, except maybe in a uh, an exchange of nuclear missiles between the Soviets and the Americans, thus ending the Cold War and everything else. Uh, but for people who lived during the Cold War, it was not abstract. It was not something uh, that was just out there and you didn't really think about. You, it was, you weren't affected by it. It was quite the reverse. Uh, it was very real. It was very up close and personal. I grew up in uh, well, a little place outside of Rome, Georgia. And I remember in 1962, in the fall of 62, during the missile crisis, that a couple of my uncles uh, at my grandmother's house, a couple of my uncles uh, started digging this big hole uh, out behind the house, out behind the, uh, the outhouse, in fact. And I asked them, I was just a kid, I asked them what they were doing. They said that they were digging a hole to build a bomb shelter. It was the fall of 62, and the Cuban missile crisis was uh, occurring, and people were genuinely frightened. Uh, later, you know, the crisis blew over. We didn't blow each other up. And uh, my uncles got tired of digging the hole, and they just started tossing the trash in it and burning it. Uh, I remember later, we moved to Atlanta in 69, and uh, I met this girl. She was my age. She lived two houses away, and we hit it off. And she invited me down to the house, and although she had uh, eight brothers and sisters, there was nobody home. Uh, she invited me down into the basement of the house. And there in the basement was this odd-looking concrete room. Uh, it was locked. I remember she took a key and unlocked the padlock, and we went in, and it had water and batteries and flashlights and food, and it was a bomb shelter. She said her daddy wouldn't uh, buy a house unless it had a bomb shelter. Uh, in Rome... Uh, there were signs everywhere pointing you to fallout shelters. Uh, they were usually down under the streets or down underneath the buildings. Uh, and then, of course, we did drills all the time in grammar school, diving under our desk. Um, duck and cover, I think they called it. So there was a, a constant reminder that you lived in a very dangerous world, uh, this Cold War uh, environment where the world could end uh, on very short notice. So I want to talk about some of the origins here. Um, we'll start with Poland. Seems like Poland's at the center of a lot of things in the 20th century. You remember that Poland was a province of Russia uh, until the end of the Great War. You remember Poland's reconstituted uh, by the Versailles Treaty 
taking a portion of Germany, the Polish corridor, and a portion of Russia to make or to reconstitute the state of Poland. You'll also remember that Poland's security is guaranteed by both uh, Great Britain and France in the spring of 1939. Uh, you remember Hitler promised that his shopping list was over um, after the Sudetenland, and then six months later he gobbles up Czechoslovakia. At this point, the British and the French guarantee Poland's security, knowing that Poland is next on Hitler's list. And then, of course, in August of 39, you have the non-aggression pact between Hitler and Stalin dividing Poland and uh, sort of um, uh, eliminating her. And this, is, of course, is the treaty that starts the Second World War. Uh, you remember that Germany invades Poland on September 1st. Uh, the British and the French declare war on Nazi Germany on the 3rd of September. And this, of course, starts the Second World War in Europe. Uh, what people don't remember, of course, is that the Soviets invade Poland on September 17th, occupying their eastern sphere of Poland. Now, later in the war, in August of 44, uh, the Red Army's marching uh, westward, d driving the Nazi armies uh, in retreat. When they get to Warsaw, Pol uh, Stalin halts the, uh, the advance of the Red Army and allows the Nazis to, to destroy the Polish underground there in Warsaw. Uh, Stalin denies us access to airfields so that we might uh, supply or in some way help this Polish uprising. Uh, this is a bad sign. This is pointing uh, toward the, uh, uh, the dissolution of the, uh, the Grand Alliance, uh, the big three, uh, the Soviets, the Americans, and the British. The, um, the big question, of course, is, uh, is Poland going to be reconstituted as a free and sovereign state after the war, or is it going to be uh, dominated by the Soviets? We have elections after the war. Um, Stalin has handpicked a group of Polish communists that he uh, intends uh, to dominate uh, the government of Poland. Uh, of course, Churchill and Roosevelt uh, would like to see a more open, pluralistic Polish political system. Uh, Stalin's not interested in that. Uh, FDR tries to convince Stalin uh, to sort of throw him a bone so that he can take back to the American people and say, look, I've done the best I could with Poland. The, uh, this is a complicated story and it continues to reverberate down the decades. I've heard the Republicans all my life accuse the Democrats of, of acquiescing uh, into Stalin's domination of Eastern Europe. Uh, that's a very simplistic way of, of looking at it, if not just downright wrong. Uh, the Red Army occupied Eastern Europe uh, at the end of the war, um, and there was nothing we could do about it, unless you want to uh, declare a war on the Soviet Union, who last week was your ally in the defeat of Nazi Germany. Uh, nobody, not Roosevelt, Marshall, Eisenhower, the American public, anybody, uh, viewed this as a plausible alternative, uh, maybe General Patton uh, might have enjoyed a sudden war with Russia, but no one else. So uh, the Red Army, uh, its presence in Poland and the other Eastern European countries uh, rendered moot any discussion of um, uh, pluralistic societies if, when Stalin is in fact uh, calling the shots here. And you have to get inside Stalin's head a little bit here too. Uh, earlier, uh, when the Allies had driven the uh, German army out of Italy, and the Allies have now occupied Italy, uh, the Allies imposed their system on Italy. Uh, the United States imposed its, its uh, market economy and its uh, democratic-style government on Italy. Uh, Stalin wanted to be involved in that. He wanted to have a say in that as an ally and uh, was, de was denied. Uh, Stalin took a lesson from that. Uh, he said that uh, the conquering country gets to impose its own system over those territories that it overtakes. So the United States conquers Italy, imposes its system. Uh, the Soviets are now going to conquer Poland and impose their system. Uh, and again, you have to look at, uh, you have to give the devil his due, I suppose, and, and look at Stalin's attitude. Uh, when Napoleon invaded Russia in 1812, he gathered his grand army there in Poland for the invasion. Of course, the Germans 
invaded Russia in 1914 uh, in the Great War, and they also mobilized their troops in Poland. And then, of course, in 1941, uh, when the Nazi armies invaded Russia, they too uh, gathered their immense forces in Poland for the invasion. Uh, Stalin said, never again. Uh, the Europeans are not going to use Poland as a staging ground to invade my country. So this is an ongoing uh, controversy. I don't know that it'll ever die. At any rate, the key here is that Stalin's occupation of Poland poisons the Grand Alliance. I think, in fact, the last letter that Roosevelt was working on <clears throat> uh, when he died in Warm Springs, I think he was writing a letter to, Paul, uh, to, to Stalin uh, about the emerging controversy in Poland, uh, about the Soviet domination of Poland. So that's the, Poland is the first thing that really begins to poison this relationship. Now Germany is um, also a complicated situation. Germany is occupied by the victorious armies at the end of the war, and where those armies stand, uh, Germany uh, begins to fall into the sphere of influence of their respective leaders. So the, the Red Army occupied eastern Germany, um, and it will remain uh, dominated by the Soviets. The western portions of Germany are occupied by the United States, French, and the British. Um, there's no agreement among the big three about what is to be done with Germany. Uh, I believe Stalin said he wanted to raise it to the ground and turn it into farmland. Uh, I think Churchill and Roosevelt realized that Germany, uh, we had to reconstitute it. Its economy uh, was sort of the engine that drives the European economy. Uh, so they wanted to reconstitute Germany. Uh, Stalin was afraid a, a revived Germany might be aggressive again. You could hardly blame him. So these are very difficult uh, questions uh, the, the, big, the big three are trying to answer. So West Germany is created. Uh, the Federal Republic of Germany is created by, the, by those sectors uh, that were occupied by the Allies, the United States, French, and the British. And then um, the Democratic Republic of Germany, East Germany, uh, dominated by the communists. And it will remain, remain this way up until uh, the end of the Cold War. Uh, nothing quite as dramatic as the, as the wall, the Berlin Wall coming down in East and West Germany, uh, coming back together to form one sovereign country. Uh, so that's a start. Uh, I'm gonna stop here for a moment, give you a break, and then we'll come back and uh, continue uh, to discuss the origins of the Cold War. Thank you.